It is Walsh Gymnasium. It's on the campus of Seton Hall University. And tonight it's where UConn returns to Big East play again after a seven-year absence. UConn and Seton Hall, all the action coming your way at the bottom of the hour right here on SNY. As we welcome you, it is the UConn women's basketball pregame show presented by Cadillac. I'm Gary Apple. Back alongside Kara Walters and UConn out of the gate very quickly in their season opener on Saturday. They beat UMass Lowell. 79 to 23. The defense was there in a very big way. But let's begin here, Carol. Last time UConn played in a Big East conference game, all the way back in March of 2013. So, wow. what does it mean for UConn <laughs> to be back in the Big East beginning tonight? Well, let's start with. I think the players don't care. They just want to play anyone, anywhere, anytime. That doesn't matter who you put in front of them. However, it means a lot to Gina Oriema, right? I played in the Big East. The games of the past, the arenas, that's Walsh. I remember Walsh has a, has a stage on it <laughs> at the end of it. Um, and just the interesting thing Gino said is the teams in the Big East aren't as impressed with UConn because they've played them before. I think the Big East will give them better competition. You at least have DePaul. Seton Hall always fights. Um, I think there's better competition, but honestly, I still think UConn's uh, going to run the table. But there are some great opportunities. They're a little closer in some of their travel. That's another thing. And Gino said, he said, like the American Conference, he said it was like renting an apartment. Right. He said the Big East now is like being home and own owning a house. So. It's exciting for him to be back, and I, I think the ladies just don't care who they play or what conference they're in. They just want to play some basketball. They don't have to travel as far, though, right. a lot of these right. games, which is a big thing. Uh, listen, you talk about the competition. Could it get ramped up a little bit? Maybe so. Don't forget yeah. they played Seton Hall last year, and it was a close game. They ended up beating them by 14 points, but that was, that was a difficult task for, for UConn. <laughs> yes, it was a difficult task. Thank goodness for Aubrey. She had one of the best breakout games of her career with 25 points. She just did a lot of things that kept UConn in the game. Crystal Dangerfield wasn't at that game. However, it was a team effort. They came out on a run, and I think we saw last year, Gary, there were a lot of teams that even though UConn blew out, they got up on a run. They went on a run. It was a game of runs, and Gito didn't like that. He wanted to take care of business early on. And the Seton Hall team, they compete. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see how they compete tonight. But they're a good team, and they're scrappy, and... You never know what's going to happen in the Big East. A little different, in my opinion, yes. than the American Conference. And it will be fun to watch. And it's early, right, with all the yeah. pauses and the stops and the starts because of the pandemic as we yeah. welcome in Maria Marino right now. And Maria, again, it's been a long time since the Huskies have played a Big East game. But also, this is significant for the rest of the conference as well. Fill us in on that. It is, Gary. And for some perspective on this, I had a chance to speak over the phone with Seton Hall coach Tony Bazella just yesterday. And this might not be the same opinion across the board, but for him, having UConn back in the Big East is an overwhelming positive. He sees playing UConn regularly as an opportunity. Um, he loves the challenge. He says his players are really engaged in practice when they know this is coming and when they're preparing for it. And so they're just generally excited. Uh, that's why he was determined to have this game rescheduled right away after it was postponed uh, due to COVID. And he did mention that his team played UConn tough last year. Uh, they're not the same team this year, and they have some challenges, but they're going to look to bring that same confidence. And the bottom line is he said playing UConn will only make them better season after season. Well, that's the thing. There's no question that UConn brings cachet to the conference and to all the other teams in the conference, uh, specifically when it comes to UConn. They're freshmen, terrific on. On Saturday, but we know it's the upperclassmen who are going to have to step up if this team is going to get to where they want to get in the month of March. So, what has Gino said about his veterans? Gino said specifically about Kristen Williams and Olivia Nelson Adota that they were too passive in their first game than the team needs them to be. He said there's got to be a willingness to really assert themselves on both ends, be involved in possessions with or without the ball, just be more impactful. I asked him if that was addressed with them in any way or if it's just understood. And he said, first off, it's just one game, so he's not worried. And also, as upperclassmen with their experience, they know. And as further proof of that, I spoke with Olivia today, uh, and she said her focus is to be more consistent, more aggressive, which are also two words that Gino himself used. And on the offensive end, she wants to execute better. Also on defense, just get after it better. Uh, and like Coach, she reiterated that it's early. So they are on the same wavelength. Yeah, just, just one game. She had a terrific first half, quiet in the second half. We thank you, Maria. I want to focus in for a moment here on the 
freshman star Paige Becker. She certainly did live up to the hype in her debut on Saturday. Top recruit in the country. She led UConn in scoring. She had 17 points in that game. And when it was over, she spoke about not letting the expectations overwhelm her. It's just a, knowing that I can't live up to anybody else's expectations. And my expectations for myself are pretty high. I would say it's higher than a lot of other people have for me. Um, so just trying to live up to what I know I can do and what my coaches want me to do, what my teammates need me to do. Um, I'm trying not to focus on what everybody else thinks and everybody else wants me to do um, because I'm not going to be perfect at the end of the day, but I just I just work to be the best version of myself. You hate to say this because she's still young, but there really isn't a, a segment of the game that Paige doesn't feel comfortable doing. It doesn't it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter what part of the game you want to analyze. Like, can she pass the ball? You saw that. Can she shoot it? You saw that. Can she get to the basket? Yeah. In baseball, they would call that a five-tool player, right? You know, they would call that a five-tool player. They can they can hit, they can run, they can throw, they can hit with power, you know, all that good stuff. So when you look at Paige, she's a five-tool basketball player, you know? Yes, she is. I mean, again, one game, but she was on the cover of Slam Magazine for a reason as we get a look at some other UConn legends in their debuts. Compared to Paige Beckers, it's presented by Cadillac. Some pretty good company in there. Maya Moore and Brianna Stewart and Diana Taurasi, a rather modest opener in her debut, but it worked out pretty well yeah. for, for Diana yeah. at UConn. You know, Gino, <laughs> Gino spoke about uh, Paige being a five-tool player. Let's focus on one of those tools, and that's her in the open floor passing the basketball. What, what's most impressive to you about her court vision? Well, first of all, the praise that Gino gives her yes. is phenomenal. It doesn't happen every day, so that speaks volumes of her coming in as a player. I think her unselfishness, and that's hard as a rookie to come in. Do I hold the ball? Do I not hold the ball? She's got a huge great basketball IQ. She sees the floor. She distributes. But that comes from unselfish basketball. I mean, it's one of those things, and they have chemistry already. They spend a lot of time together not playing and practicing and hanging out off the court. So they have a chemistry, right? She has a high basketball IQ, and she's very, very unselfish. But, but isn't there a fine line there? When you come in as a freshman, you sort of have to know your place. Even though you're right. a star, number one recruit in America coming out, you've got to know your place. And how much do I give it up? How much do I get my teammates, some right. of the veterans involved? And how much do I do it myself knowing that I've got the skills, that I'm as good as anybody in America? So yeah. what's, that, what's that balance like? Well, it, it's a learning curve, right? Because she's extremely modest for being as good as she is. She's very modest, and she's a team player. So she's going to have to kind of navigate that yep. and learn. But the funny thing is Gino and her teammates have given her the green light. So there's no reason for her to, to hesitate. I think when she's going to start scoring more is when she's she becomes more selfish, um, if that makes sense. But she, everyone around her is okay with it. She's made everybody around her better, but she's capable of doing things. So she has the green light to do it. But very, very unselfish kid, and that doesn't always happen coming You in. know, one of the things you spoke about the other day was the fact that she's got a terrific mid-range game. We've spoken yes. about the, the, the lost art of the mid-range yeah. game. So what's more impressive to you, her mid-range game or her ability to get to the get to the basket and finish. Well, I, I think that she has that versatility is really phenomenal. And your teammates have to be ready for those passes. And if not, she's going to pull up with that mid-range. And, and like you said, it's really a lost art. It sounds funny, but the mid-range, everyone either wants to go to the basket or shoot threes. Now, Gino's going to need her to shoot threes because he complained they're not going to be a good shooting team this year. Right. Uh, but she's going to have to do a little of everything. But I'm impressed by all parts of her game, Gary. I mean, really, she came out in that first game. It's only one game. It was only, you know, a subpar team. Team they played against. It's fun. I'm looking forward to seeing the progression of Paige, but she's capable of, of scoring from anywhere on the court, and that mid-range jumper is a lost art, and she has it. Yes, and, and you know, I think you bring up a really good point right there. How many players do you want to pay to see play, right, who really <laughs> pique your interest? You say, okay, I'm going to the game tonight, or I'm going to yeah. watch the game tonight to see that player, and I get that same sense that, okay, I want to see what she does tonight. Yeah. So, we're just uh, getting going here on the UConn Women's Basketball pregame show presented by Cadillac. When we come back, going to take a look back at one of the greatest UConn teams ever and what made them so special. And as we head for a break, going to take a look here at Kristen Williams getting set face off against Seton Hall tonight. The junior guard, 10.7 rebounds in the season opener on Saturday. And we're coming back in just a moment. 
Well, there is the freshman, the number one recruit in the land, Paige Beckers. Aside from her offensive prowess, she also had five steals to lead UConn in the win over UMass Lowell on Saturday. And so since arriving on campus back in 1985 to become the head coach of the UConn women, Gino Oriyama has built one of the great programs in collegiate sports history. Along with 11 national championships, he has overseen six perfect seasons. This year, the Hall of Fame coach going to be celebrating those magical teams as he hosts a four-part series called UConn Undefeated. Here now a sneak peek at the debut episode. It focuses on the 2009-2010 back-to-back undefeated UConn teams. To me, the thing that brings me back to you guys all the time is the, the feeling that you get when you are around people that you know you've experienced something really special with. And that never goes away. That just gets stronger each year because you know how special that was. Because since those days, you know that those feelings of connecting like that and bonding like that, the older you've gotten, you realize how rare those things are. That you don't have the opportunity to connect like that, to bond like that, to have those shared experiences. <laughs> very often so when you think back to 2009 2010 yeah how many games in a row did we win i don't know you know we went undefeated both years uh how many you know how many games did we win by how i don't know i just know that that bond that we created among ourselves was so great it's never going away it's never going away and coming up immediately following our post-game coverage tonight, it is the series debut of UConn Undefeated, sponsored by Cadillac. The 2009-2010 teams getting back together for a Zoom conversation, reliving their undefeated seasons again. Coming up tonight right here on SNY. And Kara, you were a part of an undefeated season at UConn, and it is something special. We heard Gino speaking about it right there. But as you look back at those particular squads that went back-to-back, -back, how did they do it? What made them so special? <laughs> Maya Moore, yes, Tina of course. Charles, okay. Caroline Doty, <laughs> Kalani Gray. I mean, you have that kind of talent. But when you do have that much talent, sometimes it doesn't work out because you have too many stars on a team. This team did a terrific job of kind of putting egos aside and doing what's best for the team. And that doesn't always happen. And let me tell you, to do anything for the first time is really hard. No team had done back-to-back -back undefeated. It's like, it's like you haven't done enough at UConn, right? Let's go undefeated. Yeah, let's try it twice. That's a really hard thing to do. And, and they really focused and worked together as a team. But I think the key to that team is having so many stars on the team that they were able to put ego aside mm. and do what's best for the team. Great squad, great people. The thing I love about UConn, Gare, yep. we all know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all friends. We all respect the, the teams that came before us, and it was a great bond. Well, as Gino said, it stays with you throughout. Yeah. It permeates your life, but it's a part of your lives yeah. as you move on and grow older. So we've got more to come here on our pregame show. We get a look on the way out the door here at the freshman, Leah Edwards. She had eight points, didn't miss a shot in her collegiate debut on Saturday, four for four shooting. Go to examine how Edwards' uh, bench contributions going to be key this season. That more when we come right back. Beckers with the rebound and the putback. The first Beckers bucket of her UConn career. Good steal from Beckers. Run out to Williams, feeds it underneath to Olivia with the up and in. I like the way Nelson Adota runs the floor. Blocked by Nelson Adota and she gets the rebound. How about that pass? Aubrey Griffin gets the foul as well. Here's Becker's running with Makarov. Oh, nice return pass. Nice unselfish play between Becker's and Makarov. Well, UConn getting their season off to a very strong start with a 56-point victory on Saturday against UMass Lowell, looking to carry that over tonight in South Orange, New Jersey, against Seton Hall. With more on the matchup, let us check in right now with Alan Bestwick and Meg Como. They've got the call for us once again tonight right here on SNY. Guys. Well, time for game number two. Gino said he knew twice as much about his team at the end of game one as he did and expects to know twice as much more. In reviewing that first game, one of the things he wanted to discuss was Kristen Williams and wanting more from her. What more does he want? You know, he wants her to assert herself more consistently. You know, don't let the game come to her. You know, she's a junior. She's a leader on this team. Be aggressive. 
and and play hard and and don't take any plays off. And that's what he's looking for to her to really assert herself and be a leader. Yeah, I had the same thing to say basically about Olivia Nelson Adota too. Be impactful on both ends of the floor. Now the freshman certainly made an impact on the floor against UMass Lowell tonight in Big East competition. One of the questions that we discussed with Gino was how their defense would be. What about team defense for UConn and the young players? Well, he's very concerned because this Seton Hall team. <laughs> They are really quick. They attack the glass really well on the dribble. They rebound well. So he's he just said, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> and as a coach, particularly him, it, it's pretty maddening when you don't know what you're going to get from your kids. But I think it'll be a great lesson for him and them to see what they are capable of. Can they get in a stance and keep guys in front of them? That will be the test here today. And uh, we'll see that test beginning in just a little while here at Seton Hall. Gary and Kara as the Huskies return to the Big East. All right, Alan and Meg, look forward to your broadcast coming up in just about eight, eight and a half minutes here on, on SNY. You know, Paige Becker's got all the attention, and rightly so, in her collegiate debut over the weekend but let's not lose sight of the fact that Aaliyah Edwards was a, a top 25 recruit part of the Canadian yeah. national team she's really impressive for a freshman she had eight points in the win didn't miss a shot what did you like most about her well you know I'm biased love the post players yes. right so yes. we'll start with that uh and other than her having awesome hair, I love that she is very physical. She takes up a lot of space in there. She goes after rebounds. I mean, this is, she's played with the Canadian national team since she was 14, okay? So she has more experience than your average freshman. I love how big she is. I love everything about how physical she is. Also, what I like that I noticed, Gary, when she sets screen, she sets screen, and it sounds simple, right? Setting a screen. She reads the screen very well. So she slipped a couple screens, right? She noticed the way they were playing defensively. She slipped the screen. Or she stays with the screen and pops out. I like the way, and that's a big screen, right? A big physical screen. So I like the way she screens as a big. That's also exciting to me, as well as the posting up part. You, you light up when you talk about the bigs. I can't help right? it. I wonder, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Um, let's get a look right now at UConn's upcoming schedule. It is presented by Town Fair Tire. After tonight's matchup against the Hall, UConn going to continue in the Big East as they take on Creighton on Thursday, and then they fa face off against Xavier on Saturday, and the next four UConn games going to be seen right here on SNY. And when we come back on our show, Avina Westbrook was back on the court for a game for the first time in nearly two years on Saturday. So how did she critique her own performance? We'll hear from her on the other side of a short break. Well, there is Avina Westbrook, the junior, the redshirt junior, getting set for a second collegiate game at UConn after not playing a game last season because of transfer rules. Uh, she opened up her UConn career with five points. Here's Avina with a review of her own performance. I would say it was a solid day today on a scale of one to ten, um, probably around like a five, six. Um, definitely not, you know, wasn't that top tier best game of my life no I haven't played in feels like two years so um just really going out there first game um first game in a UConn jersey getting that getting all the jitters out all the mistakes out and just the overall excitement of having a first game in over a year so uh you know we knew the whole team was we're going to make mistakes and little mistakes that we shouldn't be making, but now we have a better understanding as individuals and as a team of uh, what we need to really focus on in practice. You can just listen to her right there and hear a maturity, right? And that's something Gina Oriam is looking out from Avina Westbrook. I mean, she is the oldest player on the team, I think 21 years old. Uh, so the numbers were not off the chart. She graded herself out at about a five or six. She had five points and four assists, but Gina really liked the way she played. Why was that the case? I Really, what's happening with her is she spent last year out. She tried to get a waiver. She said it's the best thing that ever happened to her, not getting that waiver. She had the opportunity for a year to practice, to be around her team. They call her the mom of the team because she is the oldest, but also because she brings a lot of leadership and energy to this team. So she's she's a, a, an interesting player. She came from Tennessee, right? Leading scorer as a point guard. So it's not like she's just like this player that came back from surgery. Let's see how she... I mean, she's a player. She's a baller and I think it would be easy for her to get frustrated by her situation but she's not again very unselfish that's the thing that's going to make this team care 
Great players, very unselfish. And she's like that. And she brings a lot of energy to her team and brings the team together. So that part, the intangibles, she has. And you, you just sort of gently threw in there the fact that she did have surgery, right? Back-to-back -back surgeries yeah. on her left knee. So she's coming back from that as well. So we close in on game time. UConn and Seton Hall as UConn returns to the Big East after seven years away in the American Conference. Back with the starting lineup when we come back in just a moment. Well, there is the starting lineup for UConn tonight as they take on Seton Hall. Same starting lineup as the opener with Beckers and Kristen Williams, Avina Westbrook on a Makarot. Four guards in there, and then the big, Livia Nelson Adona. So we want to thank you for joining us here on the UConn Women's Basketball pregame show presented by Cadillac. Karen and I are going to see you back at the half right now. It's UConn and Seton Hall, the Huskies returning to the Big East. Enjoy the action here on SNY. Here's Alan Bestwick. Alan. <laughs> A look at historic Walsh Gymnasium at Seton Hall, where tonight something UConn women's basketball fans have longed for becomes reality. The Huskies begin conference play in the Big East next. season for UConn women's basketball puts the Huskies against the long familiar foe. It's number three UConn against Seton Hall from the Pirates home gym in South Orange, New Jersey, live on SNY. And good evening and happy holidays, everybody. Alan Bestwick here with Megan Como. It was June 27th, 2019 when the announcement was made that the Huskies would return to play in the Big East for this season. Little did we know at the time that it'd be the second game of the season with all this COVID stuff. But people like yourself, Meg, players, coaches, alumni, passionate fans of Husky basketball, why did this return to the Big East mean so much to them? You know, it's the Big East. You know, there's history, tradition, great rivalries. Something about, you know, the Northeast in particular, the basketball is just gritty and it suits UConn really well. And, and basketball is really important to all these member schools. So that's to me what's really, really cool. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun as we go through this season and rekindle a lot of those old rivalries. So Saturday's season opener against UMass Lowell, we saw a little different style of basketball from this Husky squad than maybe the last couple of years. You know, it really looks like this team, it, it's going to be a lot easier for them to score. All the kids, all the new kids, they bring something that this team needed, whether it's passing the ball, a presence inside, some leadership. But we also know that there's one player in particular that did stand out on Saturday, and that is Paige Beckers. I mean, her first collegiate points, an offensive rebound and putback. But, you know, she's a, proving early on to be a pretty good defensive player, stepping in the passing lane and finishing on the break. But one thing you have to be with her is you got to be ready to catch a pass. She's an outstanding passer, but already as a young player can read the defense and knows where to go on the floor. Just tremendous instincts. And those instincts will get a test against a very difficult Seton Hall team known for defensive pressure and pace on offense. So game two of the Huskies is a return to conference play in the Big East. The level of competition steps up as UConn begins its pursuit of a 20th Big East regular season championship. Huskies and Pirates tip it off next on SNY. Some great memories of uh, many successful years in the Big East. And conference play begins with these starting lineups tonight presented by Subaru. Same starting five for the Huskies as uh, in Saturday's season opener at Gamble. And for the Seton Hall Pirates, Lauren Park Lane handles the ball and returning Desiree Elmore to the starting lineup after missing Sunday's game injured. Gino seeking his 49th win over Seton Hall in his coaching career. And his opposing member, Anthony Bozella, in his eighth season as the Pirates head coach, former Big East Coach of the Year, and uh, somebody that's done a, just a terrific job with this Seton Hall program. Well, uh, there is the person who got most of the headlines after Saturday's <laughs> season opening win and earned, well-earned, Paige Beckers. Yeah, pretty good line. 17 points, nine rebounds, five assists, five steals. Pretty good debut. Huskies in the road, national flag blues. Olivia Nelson Adota wins the tip to Kristen Williams, and we're underway at Seton Hall. Westbrook inside. Huskies will have a decided length advantage over the Pirates in this one. Let's go, let's go. 
Good movement around to Makarov. Shot way off the mark. Kristen Williams is able to get the rebound and put it in. That's a way for Kristen Williams to get involved offensively. Didn't have a great shooting day Saturday. Nice job tracking down that offensive rebound. This is Lauren Park Lane who does the ball handling for the Pirates. Elmore inside, just tipped away. Good defensive reach. Tried to get it to Maya Jackson, cutting to the basket. Knocked Gina, out of bounds. Yeah, Gina was concerned about how his team was going to defend a very, very quick Seton Hall club. Inbound to Elmore, pressure. Loses control as she falls out of bounds. Huskies have numbers briefly. Kristen Williams open for the three. Got it. So important for Kristen to start strong. Does so much for her confidence. And was 0 for 4 from 3 on Saturday. But on the board early, and now the steal. Inside to Nelson Adota. Fighting there with Maya Bembry. Back out to Westbrook for 3. Off the rim. Good box out that time by Seton Hall. There's Des Elmore, passes off quickly to Bembry. Cut to the basket, Makarot there with the block on Jackson, but Jackson gets her own rebound around to Elmore. Back iron and over the backboard. Gino's got to feel pretty good. That was really nice help for Makarot. Good team defense by the young Huskies. Quick 5-0 run by the Huskies to start this ball game. Well, Tony Vizella was telling you and I yesterday, they've got to make shots. Yes. Olivia from outside, off the mark. And that's what Seton Hall wants them to do. Yeah. Take long shots. they got to keep UConn out of the lane. That one missed off uh, Bembry. Becker's ahead to a running Makarot. She'll have to slow down. Good hustle back by Alexia Alesh for Seton Hall. And the Aaron pass inbounds. Here comes Park Lane ahead. And the first points, Maya Jackson gets them for the Pirates. They like to run. Seton Hall is really good at getting the ball up the floor. We'll get to a point in this game also where we'll see a lot of front court defensive pressure. Nice inbound pass, Makarot to Olivia. Yeah, see, that's what's, what Tony was telling us they cannot let happen. And nice he... pass there by Makarot. Tony said he didn't care if the Huskies drained 12 or 13 threes. He just could not let them own the paint in this game. Bembry, too strong. Beckers fights for the rebound. Good Terri position. Yeah, terrific inside position by Beckers. Nice pass. Olivia in the lane. Can't get the shot to fall, but does draw the foul. Seton Hall is undermanned, lost a couple players, one's injury there, nice inside position by Beckers and Olivia nelson Adota running the floor, keep those hands up, the freshman will find you. Foul was on Desiree Elmore, Maya Bembry goes out of the ball game. Skyler Treadwell, one of the freshmen on the Pirate squad, comes in wearing number one. Free throws were a problem on Saturday for nelson Adota. One of two there on her first trip to the line in this one. Cutting again just off the hands of Jackson, though the Huskies were in good position to cut that off. Gino told us today that they would mix things up defensively there in a nice solid man-to-man. -man. Force that turnover. Westbrook. Becker's Westbrook Makarot just set the screen. Kristen feeds inside. There's going to be a foul called again. That's going to be on the floor on Elmore, and quickly, that's her second foul. That's problematic for Seton Hall again. They're without their best inside player who got hurt over the weekend. Yeah, Femi Funis has uh, an injury that'll keep her out for the year. And she was 6'2", and now, you know, Desiree Elmore at 5'10", is a big physical presence in there. That's going to be a problem. But as Gino told us, you know, the hard part for him is now they're going to put in smaller players, Will Seton Hall, and that's harder for, for UConn to match up with. 
Elmore stays in the game with two fouls. Shot off the rim. Rebound in the hands of the Pirates. Here's Lauren Park Lane looking to go end to end. The floater goes. I'm not surprised Puzilla left Elmore in. She's a senior. You got to hope she's mature enough to not pick up number three. They get the ball right in where Olivia works on her. Help comes. And that'll be called on Nelson Adota as uh, Elmore went to the floor. The risk paid off that time. <laughs> I don't even think that was an offensive foul. <laughs> It was good, you know, good, good, like her hand was in there. Yeah. If anything, you could have called that right arm in there. Mark Lane will draw contact from Beckers and get some free throws to show for it. Lauren Park Lane, a five foot six sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware, team leader in minutes and assists, and uh, was an AAU teammate with Mira McLean, one of the Huskies freshmen. And so she will come to the line and shoot free throws. And Vizella was telling us that this kid has to play well for them here tonight. Mm. Makes both ends from the free throw line and closes the uh, advantage the Huskies once had. A quick five-point lead, down now to just two. Kristen Williams from the corner, that's for three, around and out. Fight for the rebound. Bodies on the floor. Great hustle. <laughs> Tied up ball. That will go to Seton Hall on the possession arrow. When you talk about wanting to see effort, when there's a loose ball on the floor, who's the first player to dive in? That scores points in my book. Yeah, and you know what? Both teams uh, work so hard. They're both so well coached. You're going to see all kinds of bodies flying. Missed switch defensively on the Huskies. But Jackson couldn't make him pay. Becker's ahead to a running Westbrook. Short. Altered and shot because of a flying by defender. One of the big concerns that Pizella had was if you, if they don't knock down shots and, and they miss their shots, UConn usually gets layups down the other way. And here, Westbrook just short-armed. It could came up short on the shot. So Pirates ball, trailing now by just two. Here's a lash from outside. Back iron. Olivia gets the rebound and was pushed in the back and will draw the foul on Maya Bembry. See, last year, those shots at Seton Hall has been jacking up. They were all going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you remember last year's game here, uh, it was a close one for a while until the Huskies pulled away late. Yeah, oh, thanks to Aubrey Griffin. Nelson Adota thought about another three, hits a cutting Beckers. Uh, and walk. Walk. Yep. So the third turnover by the Huskies as we've just crossed the midway point of the opening quarter in their return to Big East play. Two-point advantage for UConn. Interesting element of the small Walsh Gymnasium. The team's kind of pulling their huddles way over against the side of the, the building, as far away from each other as possible, so nobody can hear anything. <laughs> and we are pretty much on the <laughs> roof, so. <laughs> but you saw Tony Bazell in the huddle. You know, he got over a, a case of COVID, and he, he recovered. And then after he recovered, he developed pneumonia and blood clots. Mm. And it was really, really scary. So we're, he missed a, a game over the weekend last week. And uh, we're glad he's back and, and feeling better. He's a great, great guy, terrific coach. That rebound is going to go off seat Hall and be UConn's ball. Yeah, I, and you know, I always find Tony, whenever you listen to him speak, just to be a really thoughtful guy with the interesting things to say. He's the best. Well, his team's within two, missed an opportunity to get even. So Huskies ball here. Same starting lineup on the floor for UConn. Des Elmore back into the game with two fouls. Wearing 25 for Seton Hall. That shot off the mark from Westbrook. Olivia with the rebound. Makarov. Got it. 
That's three. Nice inside out. Really good patience. Nice pass from Kristen Williams and a great finish by Makara. Ball just off the hands of Maya Jackson and out of bounds to UConn. The fourth turnover for the Pirates. And then inside out it is so difficult for the defense to cover both. So the lead back up to five. Look at the numbers for three-point field goals. Those three-point shots really crucial to the Pirates' hopes of success in this ball game. Yeah, that was one thing Gino told us. You know, they shoot 30 a game. There's Beckers on the board in this one. Nice run end-to-end -end by Lauren Park Lane. That's the defense Gino was talking about. Beckers let her go right by. There was no help coming from the backside. Westbrook with a nice dish underneath to Kristen. Nice pass. Jackson, pass outbound, intercepted by Makarov. Good active hands by Makarov on defense. Beckers will run end to end, switches the ball to the right hand and lays it in. Nice body control, good strength by the freshman. Here's Avina Westbrook with the steal and the run out. Big run here by UConn. Yeah, off the timeout, Huskies on an 11-2 run. And Gino talks about how poorly they play defensively. They've gotten so, ma so many points right now from their defense. Outside to Treadwell. Too strong. Beckers with the rebound. Here comes Makarot on the run. Nice pass to Kristen Williams. And a bucket. And a timeout. Seton Hall. Yeah, Bazella couldn't wait any longer. Had to stop this UConn run. And that was just a picture perfect fast break. I mean, how about this from Makarot? Right in step. Williams just had to catch and explode up. So after going up 5 nothing to start the game and then allowing the Pirates to get back into it, the Huskies came out of that midway timeout in this first uh, quarter and have just accelerated. And, and Tony Bazella's worst fear has come true. 0 for 5 is Seton Hall from three-point range. He said it's going to be critical for them here. Yes especially being undermanned. But, I, you know, on the aside, Elmore is, is healthy enough to play, but her having two fouls is a big problem for Seton Hall. But she's out there, and her, I'll tell you what, her ankle looks pretty good. So 13-2 run for the Huskies who made their last five shots. Aliyah Edwards into the ball game. There's Elmore. Good spin. That's a tough matchup for Beckers. Playing against a senior. Really good player. And he steps for Beckers. And a turnover by UConn. The other thing Bazella talked about was points in the paint being key. Those are 14-6 in favor of the Huskies right now. Yeah, that was what he did not want to happen. Yeah. You gotta pick your poison. Here's Park Lane working on Westbrook. Throws it high off the glass and gets it. What a tough shot from the 5 6 Park Lane. Kristen finds a lane, gets it to go, and one. That's what she's gotta do get to the basket. You know, she's so much more explosive this year. Lost some weight in the offseason. She's left-handed, so that nice crossover. And then the nice roll on the road. Now already surpassing her scoring contribution in Saturday's opener. Now with uh, 11 points and 5 of 7 from the floor. Gina wanted her to be more assertive, and I... I I believe she has answered the call. Minute and a half to go in this opening quarter.
Good hands by Aaliyah Edwards. Oh, shot clock running down and the ball out of bounds off UConn, but just two seconds to shoot for the Pirates. Heaved up and off the mark by Park Lane. Time violation and the turnover to the Huskies. Good defensive pressure over in the corner to cause that out-of-bounds play and put Seton Hall in a tough spot. Well, really good defense by UConn in that half-court possession. So a minute to go here in this opening quarter. Kristen Williams, front iron. Rebound by Maya Jackson. Looking for a screen. Gets one from Alesh. Bambry. Off the mark with the spin move. And now Becker's with the ball. And coming up on half a minute to go. Edwards. Makarot from the corner. Short. Westbrook gets it back. Underneath to Edwards, yes. Westbrook was involved all over the place on that possession. Outside and a three from Warren Park Lane. Ten seconds and counting. Well, she shuffled. Marcarat had to hurry the shot, and the quarter ends with the Huskies. Frustrating their coach, but having a 10-point lead <laughs> on that last possession. 25-15 at the end of one here at Seton Hall. Well, Kristen Williams has led the way for the Huskies in this opening quarter. Gosh, look at the difference. Just already what she's... she's Scored one more point than she did all day Saturday, and I just love the way she looks. She's being more assertive like Gino wanted her to be. Taking it to the basket, not settling for jump shots. And you can just tell she feels more confident. There's Beckers from Williams for two. Subs into the game for UConn. Olivia's back in. Edwards still on the floor. Nika Mule has seen her first minute of action in this game for the Huskies. There she's guarding Lauren Park Lane, who has been the offense for Seton Hall. That one missed. Rebound, though, knocked back out. Seton Hall gets another try. That one off the mark. Park Lane has 11 points for Seton Hall. The rest of the team has four. Mule. A little bit out of control. Yep. There's Park Lane, this time guarded by Beckers. Strong shot from outside, off the mark by Treadwell. Kristen with the rebound, over to Page. UConn playing like their hair's on fire right now. And a foul as Olivia got the long rebound, and Treadwell tried to step in her way. First foul on Treadwell in uh, the ball game. Yeah, kind of a little helter-skelter there. Just, just that one extra step too far. And, you know, again, it's it's game two. It's, you know, we're, it's the twilight zone we're living in these days. So <laughs> it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. It's always hard to play on the road. Here's Mule. Oh, Edwards with the rebound, though, and back up and in. I love this kid. What a big, physical, strong presence in the lane. That's a good word, presence. Yeah, and relentless on the boards. Shot clock down to 10 for the Pirates. Here's Park Lane. She'll drive against Beckers. Dump it inside, Elmore, the nice turnaround, but that was off the mark. Rebound inside, and brought back out. Jackson to Elmore, no. Those are the shots that Seton Hall has got to knock down. Kristen. Rebounded by Treadwell. Oh. 
Park Lane will draw contacts in the foul on Beckers as she ran into the lane to get uh, to the rim. We talked about Aaliyah Edwards before. Watch the way she just gets position and just wants that ball more than anybody else. Aaliyah had a strong debut on Saturday. Gino told us when we talked to him earlier today, she got a lot done in her minutes. Yeah, she's going to be a superstar. And here's been the superstar of the night so far for Seton Hall. Lauren Park Lane has done most everything for the Pirates and adding to her total here. And she's another one of the players that Tony Bazella did say to us, we really need her to play well. Well, she's holding up her end of the bargain. I think he said she's got to, got to, got to, got to, got to play well. <laughs> I counted five got to's. <laughs> Here's Aubrey Griffin into the ballgame. Set career highs here a year ago. Olivia Nelson Adota from just beyond the foul line. Off the mark. You know, second possession in a row where they settled for the first quick open shot. Makes Seton Hall play defense. From the corner of Lash around and out. Rebound, Edwards. Becker's now up ahead to Griffin. Intercepted. Here's Amari Wright. Feeds outside. Good step move by Park Lane. Dumps underneath, and that'll be a travel on Maya Bembry. She looked to pass to the outside, realized she had a lane to the bucket. She's laughing, going, yeah. man, I, <laughs> if I wasn't so indecisive, I wanted to pass it, but I had a layup. And when there's indecision is often when you will turn the ball over with shuffling the feet. Eighth turnover for the Pirates. And that'll be a turnover as Nelson Adota just had uh, foot creep. Six turnover for UConn. It's so funny because Saturday's game was so fluid and, and mm -hmm. so pretty, and this is the exact opposite. Well, I think the word you used to describe Big East play was gritty, yeah. right? Yeah. Fumbled away. Here comes Mule. Ahead to Beckers. Oh, around the back to Griffin, who just couldn't handle it. <laughs> that is not the first of those passes we've seen from Beckers in just a game in less than you, a half. That shows you what he thinks of it. You know, again, everything, the pace of it, UConn is just a little bit out of sorts. And Griffin just trying to do too much before she caught the ball. Elmore working against Griffin, cut off by Nelson Dota. Another travel. All right, 12 point lead for UConn. I think this is one of those things. Beckers takes a shot that'll be off the mark. A little short on that one. Here's Park Lane. One of those things Gino talked about, about wanting to see what different combinations on the floor will give the team. Park Lane misses. Nelson Adota gets her pass blocked, but right back to Beckers. Up ahead to Edwards. And Elmore had to be careful not to pick up a foul. Nice job by UConn to get the ball up the floor quickly. And the shoot. And the shot goes from the freshman Amari Wright. Nice read there by Wright. UConn switched on that screen on the ball and she made him pay. Edwards draws a triple team and they'll call the offensive foul. Smart team defense there by Seton Hall. I mean, you see number 25, Elmore, come over. She had great position, and it was coming from the blind side, so Edwards didn't see her coming. So Paige Beckers goes to the bench. Vita Westbrook back into the ball game for the Huskies. And still a 12-point lead for UConn with Elmore with the ball.
Doing a clean in the game also for UConn. Mark Lane continues to put the ball in the basket. 15 now. Yeah, UConn has not found a way to stop Park Lane. Mule to Westbrook. No. Rebound, McLean. Of course, right? Come in and offensive rebound. Elmore from the free throw line, misses. Ball goes right into the hands of Alesh. Pirates reset. Park Lane has to put up the floater over Edwards. Gives the official a stare down about why didn't I draw a foul on that. But has another bucket for Seton Hall. Ball through the hands of McLean out of bounds and brings us to a timeout. Well, Lauren Park Lane has been the star of the game for the Pirates, for the Huskies. Good aggressive offensive rebounding from Mir McLean to get her first points of the game. We'll be going to Gary Apple and Kara Walters at halftime for all of highlights and analysis. Plus, we'll hear from Amelia Edwards on which players she leans on for advice on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Ford. Three minutes and 50 seconds away. Lauren Park Lane, look at the numbers. She is one shy of her career high in this game. We thought it'd be raining threes from Seton <laughs> Hall, and all their scoring's coming from two. Yeah, I'll tell you what, she's listed at 5'6". I think there is no chance <laughs> that she is actually 5'6", but she is playing big here tonight, doing everything for Seton Hall offensively, keeping them in this game. 8 of 16 on two-point shots for the Hall, 1 of 11 from outside. Now let's see if Mir McLean, the freshman, can stop her. Be a foul on the floor on Aubrey Griffin. That'll be her first. UConn doing a nice job communicating defensively, switching on screens. Defense back by the rim, forced the shot to be altered. Huskies will have a 10-point lead and three and a half to go here in this opening half. Kristen Williams back in the game. Here's Aubrey Griffin, cut off by Elmore. Finds Westbrook driving. Ball would not go in the bucket. Jackson, too strong. Makarot running to McLean. That'll be contact on the floor, but she saw the block coming and stopped and draws the foul. Smart play by the freshman to draw that foul. Good break there by UConn. So Amari Wright is called for the foul. Davina Westbrook will inbound the ball for UConn. Inside to McLean. Aggressively goes up, draws the foul again, and one. I like the patience in there. When she caught that ball, she gathered herself for a split second. Watch this. Feel the defense. Okay, what am I doing? Boom. Strong. So, of importance, that was Des Elmore's third foul. Yeah, that's devastating for Seton Hall. And McLean adds on the extra point. And so we'll keep an eye on 25 for Seton Hall. Elmore, who has the ball, sees an opening, and draws the foul on the way through. Call that on Aubrey Griffin. That'll be her second. Well, Desiree Elmore, of course, from Hartford. Uh, missed the game on Sunday. Sprained an ankle early in the uh, Pirates game on Friday night. Sat Sunday. 
Tony Vizella wasn't sure when we talked to him yesterday what uh, her status would be for tonight's game, but he figured, you know, she was saying to him anyway, hey, it's UConn. Of course I'm going to play. And, and she looks terrific. However, he did say to her, you know, I know you want to play for UConn, but we've got another big game on Saturday. I need you for yeah. So, yeah, she'll sit for the last 244 of this half. Yeah. With, with three fouls, absolutely. Never picked up the first two very early in the game, if you weren't with us, but has played much of the game since then, until just now, getting the third foul. Marcarat cut off. Good defense, good feed, but that's off Aubrey Griffith's hands, gets it back. Right, there was a whistle. That was a three-second violation on UConn, so a turnover by the Huskies. Tenth turnover of this opening half for UConn. Yeah, hasn't been the prettiest half of basketball for UConn. You gotta <laughs> give Seton Hall some credit. They play real scrappy, hard-nosed basketball. Park Lane from three. No. And stepped on the sideline as she tried to save the knocked away ball from Makarot. Lindy Nelson and Dota will come back into the ball game. Audrey Griffin will go to the bench. And the Huskies will have 26 to shoot here as we get down to the final two minutes of this second quarter. Olivia will be at three points on one of three shooting. Good break for the Pirates and the basket up and in by Amari Wright. Ten-point gap. Big lead for the Huskies was 14 in this one. Nelson Adota with the floater. That changes the game when your center can knock down shots from the top of the key. Park Lane left all alone, just outside the free throw line, and drops it in. So career high for Lauren Park Lane, and we're not even at halftime yet. Double team comes on Olivia to Makarov. Shot off the mark. Nelson Adota gets the rebound after being well defended. Just used her length to advantage. Here's Kristen cutting. No. Here the play. Was hit. Will be tied up underneath the basket. That'll be Seton Hall's ball on the possession arrow. I thought she was too, by the way. Yeah, Kristen Williams. When she went in for the shot, it was a terrific cut. And I thought for sure she got hit here. Right there. Yeah, right in the head. Unless they thought she got the ball. Got a play on, though? Yep. All right, so Aubrey Griffin is back into the ball game. Mir McLean goes to the sideline. And we're under a minute to go in the second quarter. Wow, what a take to the basket. Well, where's the, the weak side help? That's the, the problem defensively there for UConn. And Gino has talked about it. He's not sure how his team is going to respond. There's a walk. Well, UConn is flustered right now. Some of it is because of what Seton Hall is doing, and some of it is some self-inflicted wounds, Gino's team. Dozen turnovers in this one for the Huskies so far. Westbrook almost had it knocked away, but saw the defender coming at the last minute. Makarov pulls up, and the Huskies will have 10 seconds for a final shot. Westbrook calling for a screen, sees a lane, feeds outside, Griffin to Williams. Shot won't go, couldn't get the rebound, and that will be how this opening half will end. An eight-point lead for UConn as they head to the locker room. They're Return to Big East play, starting off very crisply, but uh, the determined Pirates fighting back in uh, what is very aptly described as a gritty ball game. <laughs> That's a word. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've hit on a theme here. 
And the head coach, Gino Auriemma, joins us now from the floor here at Walsh Gymnasium. Gino, through two quarters, uh, I'm sure you got some things to talk about about uh, your team, but analyze the performance so far. Uh, we, we got off to a pretty good start, but, um, you know, like we said, we were worried about some of their quickness in the backcourt, and, um, you know, we're, we, we haven't been able to figure out how to guard number three. Um, you know, and then at, then at the other end, um, you know, we got guys that don't make shots when they have to make them. That's all there is to it. You know, um, we, we get open shots, and, uh, uh, and you got to make them. Um, you know, and, and some ill-advised passes. Um, you know, we, we just got to get, and we got to get Paige more involved in our offense. Uh, so I feel pretty good where we are going into the second half. Okay, Gino, thanks. Appreciate it. We'll see you at uh, the end of the ball game. Gino Oriema, the head coach for the Yukon Huskies. Our halftime interview with Gino presented by PC Richard and Son. Well, pretty good analysis. Game started off well. Got a little sloppy from there. Halftime show with Gary and Kara coming right up. It is the UConn Women's Halftime Report. It's brought to you by your local Ford stores. Gary Apple back alongside Kara Walters inside Studio 31 here in New York City. UConn got out of the gate relatively quickly and then the lead uh, only eight at the half at 38 to 30. And I think it was sort of a... You know, we spoke about Kristen Williams on our pregame show, the fact that she can be inconsistent at times, got yeah. off to a great start in that first quarter, and then a difficult second quarter. Why was that the case? She, yes, and that's what Gino needs for her, right? Consistency, no points in the second quarter. If you watch her play, she's when she puts her mind to it and she's aggressive, especially early on, she had a great, she penetrated to the basket. She's a big guard, right? Use your size. When she doesn't get involved, she watches a lot. She stands. Now, this is a game where in the post, they're double, triple teaming the post. Guards reset, move, kick right back out to her. But she tends to watch often and not get involved enough. And that's what he needs. He needs that leadership for her to get involved with every possession. All right, so 11 points for Kristen Williams to lead the way for UConn. But again, all of those points coming in the first quarter. UConn still does lead it at the break, 38 to 30 over Seton Hall. Much more to come here on our Halftime Report presented by Ford when we come back in just a moment. Here we go. First half stats presented by your local Ford stores. UConn leads it by eight at the break, but neither team shot it very well from downtown. UConn two for 13, 15%. Seton Hall a rather unrobust. Is that a word? <laughs> One for 14 at 7%. But again, UConn does lead it at the break. When we come back, I want to hear from the freshman, Aaliyah Edwards. She had a good first half, who she's been leaning on for advice during her early days at UConn. Back in a moment. So here we go. First half leaders again presented by your local Ford stores. Kristen Williams leads the Huskies. She's got 11 points. Olivia Nelson Adota leads on the boards with six. Here's the freshman, Aaliyah Edwards. She had six points in the first half, who she's been leaning on during her early days at UConn for advice and leadership. All three of our um, leaders, all three of our captains, Savina, Olivia, and Kristen, um, they're great role models and also just um, great examples of what our team needs to be and what we strive to be as, uh, as a freshman. So I definitely look up to them, whether um, it's in practice or off the court too. Leah Edwards, three for three in that first half. Uh, her first game, she was four for four, so she's seven for seven. Hasn't missed a shot yet. Yeah. She's been really good. Second half on the way. We'll see you back on the postgame show. Eight-point lead for the Huskies as we get ready to start the second half. It's kind of appropriate that at a place that's the home of the Pirates, there's a thing called a crow's nest. <laughs> and in this socially distanced era, that's where we're broadcasting from tonight. Alan Bestwick and uh, Megan Kulmo. And, and Kulmo's court vision is brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. What did you see from our lofty perch in that first half? Well, God knows we didn't see very good three-point shooting from either <laughs> team. But what we did see was... Oh, my goodness. Lauren Park Lane just went off for Seton Hall. I mean, layups, stutter steps, three-pointers. I love this one. Crossover, UConn not stopping the ball on the break. She just had her way. 19 points on 7 of 13 shooting. And UConn's really going to have to step up and stop her. And then let's see if somebody else from Seton Hall 
can score. I'm just curious how much of the Huskies' struggles are opposition caused. We talked about stepping sure. up in difficulty with an opponent. You know, Seton Hall, pretty good program. Big East competition. Well, think about this. You know, you're going on the road for the first time. Pretty young team. You know, there's no fans. Gino kind of talked about that coming into the season. You know, how, how hard is it going to be going into an opposing gym? There's no fans. You know, so it's hard to get you know, excited and fired up and they have to find a way to motivate themselves. But, I mean, think of it this way. Both teams are, are not shooting horribly from two-point range, but three-point range, 15% for UConn, 7% for Seton Hall. Neither team playing exceptionally well. UConn's just got to slow it down and get good shots. Starting five on the floor for the Huskies. There's Nelson Adota. They're going to call a foul into her back. I believe that's going to be on Alexia Alesh. Yeah, a little too much arm action. Knocking her in the back. And Bazella's like, what? Are you kidding? And uh, for Tony Bazella, he talked about, you know, keeping the Huskies from getting points in the paint, forcing them to take shots from outside. That's been what's been accomplished. It's, yeah, a lot. it's worked out well for him thus far. And he'll call a travel on Olivia. I thought that was a good move. Let's see if she shuffled her feet. I thought it was a good move. Well, turnover to start this uh, second half, and here is Lauren Park Lane with the ball. Beckers was guarding her, but Park Lane with a shifty move away and a bucket. I thought this first five minutes would be really good to see if UConn can shut her down. Nice job by Park Lane. Nelson Adota from way outside, back iron, but gets the friendly roll. <laughs> Elmore, she has three fouls in this game, working on Nelson Adota, looking for room. Olivia got a block, Elmore got it back. Nice persistence there by Elmore. Six point lead for the Huskies. Kristen Williams, looking for a screen, gets one from Nelson Dota. She yeah. wants to get Paige Becker's involved more on the offensive end. I don't know if she's touched it. That is going to be another foul on Alesh. Second in quick order. You know, a problem that UConn had last year was being stagnant offensively, and, and it's creeping back into their offensive repertoire. A lot of blue jerseys just standing around. Beckers for three. Yes. That's her way to get involved. Touch the ball and, and knock down a three. Rebound on the Jackson miss. Knocked right away. Jackson gets it back. Nobody there underneath wearing a white jersey for Seton Hall. So the Huskies come up. Looking to expand their lead back to double digits. Beckers feeds. Olivia saw the defender coming. A nice stop and hesitation to get the bucket. That was just a perfect pick and roll. Elmore with the left hand. This is everything. Beckers on Park Lane. Right to the rim. That's the patience and the, the offensive attacking that Gino wants. So Park Lane getting some instructions from the hall bench, waiting for the screen. Steps back for three, no. So the Huskies on a 7-0 run here at this point. There's Kristen, gets the screen from Olivia. Puts it up off the back of the iron, and that will be knocked out of bounds off of Avina Westbrook. How about that nice pick and roll, perfect pass, leading her right to the hoop. And then this, I thought, was just really good patience, seeing where all the defense is, particularly where the backside defense was, and then attack the glass. So Becker's up into double figures now, 11 points on five of seven shooting. It's only taken one three, that one we just saw early in this third quarter, and made it. Oh, 
right. Alesh. Skyler Treadwell. Back to right. Ten to shoot. Alesh. Hit it too strong. Pretty good offense, though, by Seton Hall. They got the shot they wanted. Pass ahead to on a Makarot. She'll feed back out to Beckers. Inbound. Nelson Adota with a contested shot. Nice <laughs> control. What a nice catch by Nelson Adota, too. Barclay will draw the foul as she ran to the hoop and tried to get the running right-hander up. That's a tough, tough matchup for the freshman Beckers. But how about this? In traffic, nice job by Nelson Adota to snag that ball in the air in traffic and finish it. So that is the third foul on Paige Beckers in this ball game. And here is Lauren Park Lane at the free throw line. Where she hasn't missed yet. Five of five now in the ball game. Only one of six from three. But now up to 22 points. Twenty-three of the halls, thirty-six. She takes really good care of the basketball too. She, and she's just exploding offensively here. What a pass! And the ball won't go. Thought that was going to just roll over the rim, but the foul driven by Olivia. And yeah, Gino's frustrated that she didn't make that shot. But you know what? They're attacking better. Nice pass from Beckers to Westbrook. Westbrook, a pretty pass there. To Nelson Adota couldn't get it to go, but at least they're attacking and more active offensively. Olivia was only two of six in the opener Saturday against UMass Lowell from the free throw line. And that'll be two of four in this game. Treadwell fed inside Elmore, tried to throw it up and draw the foul. Did not get the call. Makarov drives in. Good dish underneath to Kristen Williams. Really nice fast break there by UConn. UConn has a better presence about themselves right now in the game. Better composure. Alesh, off the mark, and two Huskies will tap it off each other and out of bounds. Say, Alesh has been so close all <laughs> evening. Yeah, but still 0 for 5 from 3. Yeah, and they've been good shots. Yeah. So Maya Jackson will come back into the ball game for Seton Hall. Yeah, I have a thought on what you were just saying about uh, energized and, and looking more together. Elmore, step back, high glass, nice. This is the starting five on the floor. And as Gino has substituted other players in, and especially some more of the younger players, the cohesiveness at both ends of the floor has been a little less. And that's not unexpected, it's only game number two. Yeah, he's gonna continue to work with different lineups, but this is his bread and butter. Oh, Nelson Adota from just inside the three-point line. Elmore outside to a wide open Treadwell. He can't get it to drop. Becker's on the run. No defender anywhere near her. Yeah, Seton Hall fell asleep. They've done a good job of taking away transition. Maybe a call on Kristen Williams with the reach in. That will be her first. Avina to Page, and two more points on the UConn side of the scoreboard. After leading by eight at halftime, the Huskies have opened up the biggest lead of the ball game. It is 18 now here as we're midway through this third quarter. 
Paige Beckers has been on fire here since coming out of the locker room at halftime. Well, great recognition that there was no one guarding the guarding her as she inbounded the ball and then the pretty bounce pass. She can get herself to the basket. Nice smart play. And then again, the good dish and the good catch by Nelson Adota. It's already equaled her first half scoring in this third quarter um, without turning the ball over either. The sign of, of a really good player is when you come out at halftime and you had a not a great first half, how do you respond? And I, and I think she's responded incredibly well, being very productive here in the third quarter. Park Lane driving on Makarov. Over the top of Nelson Adota. Uh, that was a little bit of a, a hope for a shot. Beckers had time to set the feet. That's for three. Up to 16, and now the leading scorer in the ballgame for the Huskies is Paige Beckers. We're kind of in a 2 3 zone. Elmore. Dez has had a tough shooting night. Three of 11 in this ball game. Now three of 12. Inbound pass to Nelson Adota from Westbrook. Really good position in there by Nelson Adota. She buried her players. Eighteen assists on twenty-seven made field goals for the Huskies. Nelson Adota, very physical in there. She got caught. You see the freshman running the floor. Really good spacing way outside the three-point line. Defense didn't get out to her, so she made him pay. Nelson Adota uh, called for her second foul there, but has nine points in this third quarter alone. UConn needs Nelson Adota to be active, particularly on the offensive end, and, and Seton Hall doesn't have anyone who could stop her. That's Maya Jackson for three. That is just the second made three in the ball game for the Pirates. Here's Kristen Williams. They missed everything. And smart play by Jackson to throw the ball off of Nelson Adota, back out of bounds, and it'll be Seton Hall's basketball. Yeah, heads up play by the sophomore Jackson. so close all evening. Yeah. It's the second made three of the ball game. Nelson Adota tried to put the ball into a tight space. It went off the feet. Well, the ball got there, right? Pretty bounce pass. Okay, fine, but what is Becker's going to do once she gets it, if she catches it? Way too much traffic in there. So 20-second shot clock here for the Huskies to work with on the inbounds. Leah Edwards has checked into the ball game for UConn for Nelson Adota. Becker stops and pops. That's, that's her move. The defender trails coming around that screen. It's the third time she's already done that this season. Here's Elmore. Mark Lane works off the screen. Now the switch. Mark the Rock will defend. Five to shoot. High glass? No. Minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Huskies have opened up a big lead, led by Olivia Nelson Adota and Paige Beckers in this third quarter. Edwards puts it up. Elmore will do the same. 
Kristen Williams ahead of the defense. Beautiful pass from Beckers. Seton Hall getting a little sloppy, giving up a layup. That was their big focus coming into the game. From the corner for three, Maya Membry. Second one in short order. Going to get a little feel going after struggling a little bit earlier in the game. Beckers to a wide open. Kristen Williams. Yes. Wide open three like that on the break. Those are daggers against the defense when you make them. 25 to go in this third quarter. At about five seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Park Lane to Elmore to Park Lane. Edwards got a hand on the shot. And that is how this third quarter is going to end. Oh, the five seconds left, excuse me. I heard the buzzer, that was a time violation. Really good defense by UConn. See, everybody else heard the buzzer and thought the quarter was over, too. <laughs> Teams all going to the bench. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the only one. All right, 5.3 left. Westbrook will go out. Mule will come in. And Aubrey Griffin will come in for Anna Makarov. You kind of going to try to get the ball up the floor in a hurry, obviously. 5.3 left. Screen by Edwards. And to end for Beckers. Yes! I say that worked well. I mean, what a screen that was. Monster screen by Aaliyah Edwards. Tremendous body control. And a chance to add one more to it. And what did Gino say to us at halftime? Paige Becker's not involved enough in the offense. Well. That has certainly changed here in the third quarter. In this third quarter, Olivia Nelson, Adona, and Paige Beckers combined for 26 points in the quarter. Beckers up to 21 in the game on 9 of 11 shooting. Oh, she got involved, all right. And our game reset presented by Town Fair Tire. Paige Beckers now leading the way on the scoreboard for the Huskies. Lauren Park Lane of those 23 points, only four came in that third quarter. Yeah, UConn definitely came out in this third quarter defensively and really made it difficult for Park Lane to get what she wanted. And, and Beckers really did a good job of coming out and really taking over offensively. Gino told us going into halftime there were three things he thought needed to be addressed. All was just very successfully addressed in that third quarter as Bembry gets the shot to go. Right, needed to get Paige more involved in the offense. Needed to slow down Park Lane for Seton Hall. And needed to make some shots. Well, the Husky shot 14 of 16 in that third quarter. You know, it's largely, too, because they were getting the right shots. Beckers outside to Kristen. Off the mark. Whistle. Going to be a foul on Elmore underneath the basket. And that'll be her fourth. It's a bizarre call. No. Oh, oh, wrap the arm around. Wrap okay. Arm around, yeah. Beckers to Edwards. It's a good sign of the future, freshman to freshman. Sure it is. Huskies outscoring the Pirates 33 to 17 in that <laughs> not, third quarter. Not bad for the present either. Yeah. <laughs> Elmore works on Mule. 
does not get the call. That was a frustration yeah. play by Elmore. Beckers with the soft floater that uses a lot of iron but goes through. She's so good at getting into gaps and exploiting those gaps in the defense. So now there's different personnel grouping on the floor. See what they can do at both ends of the court. That's gonna be a foul on Mule. It'll be her first. Park Lane comes back into the ball game after getting a few minutes rest. 23 of their 49 points. That's a foul. Offensive number foul. 10, yeah. Maya Bembry. A little too aggressive with that screen. Threw the arms out. A little bit of a cheap shot. The officials caught it. Griffin to Beckers for three. Edwards with the rebound. Oh, she was wide open. And waited too late to get that one inside. Intercepted. Here come the Pirates. This will be Jackson. Tied up ball. Lost control of it. Kind of a high dribble. And Beckers good, was there to pounce. Good hands by Beckers. Good anticipation. Elmore will come back into the ball game for Jackson. Kristen Williams. Edwards gets the rebound, misses the layup. Fights for it back and gets it up and in. She is going to be so fun to watch over the next four years. Forceful. Treadwell gets away from Kristen Williams but misses everything. Mule with the rebound. Way ahead to Kristen Williams who turned for the basket before she had the ball. Park Lane will draw the foul. I mean, this is just persistence, relentless, and great, great focus. That's one. That's wanted. I want the ball. Oh, man, she is good. And I'm going to show you I want it more than you do. So here is Lauren Park Lane. Perfect from the free throw strike so far. Very quiet in the second half. Got to give credit to UConn defensively. And that will put the Pirates up to 51 points. Problem for them, the Huskies have 77. They got to get it in the middle. Griffin, almost had it stolen away, got it back. Westbrook, we're gonna call three seconds. I'll tell you, Paige makes such a difference against that zone. Thursday night, Huskies are back at Gamble against Creighton. 6 p.m. is uh, with our pregame coverage presented by Cadillac. We on SNY, that is Thursday. So the method will be get home from here. Beckers with the steal. Pass to Williams, has to check up. Edwards with another offensive board. So we'll get home from here, wait out the storm, shovel out, then drive the gamble. Elmore 
He is going to draw the contact this time, fighting her way into the lane. Busy stretch here for the Huskies. Played Saturday, tonight. They'll play Thursday against Creighton and Saturday against Xavier, also at Gamble, then on the road to Villanova on the 22nd to wrap up this pre-Christmas stretch. Hoping to see a Big East schedule for the post-Christmas stretch very, very soon. 79-51, UConn over Seton Hall. Seventy nine fifty one Huskies here in the fourth quarter in their first Big East game since uh, 2013. Aaliyah Edwards into double figures in scoring. You know, she's just really active. Look at her, her hands ready. Kicking it out ready. She's saying go over to the wing and then she's like, OK, forget it. I'll just go get the rebound. And just effortless. There's so few movements, right? Like just catch the ball and put it back up. Impossible to defend. She's got uh, four offensive rebounds out of her total of seven in the game, six of eight from the floor. She's very efficient. So Des Elmore shooting here, free throws for Seton Hall. Still um, having her struggles from the floor in this one, just three of 14 field goals in shooting for Elmore. Little front court pressure now for the Pirates. Kristen Williams left alone, cutting, but couldn't drop in the layup. That would have been a nice assist for Beckers. Westbrook on Park Lane. Nice cut by Elmore in the lane. Good feed for Park Lane. Aubrey Griffin to Edwards. Takes it strong to the hoop and will draw the foul as Skyler Treadwell just a couple seconds too late trying to get position. And that's the assertiveness you want to see from the freshman Edwards. Yeah, they've done a good job of taking care of the basketball, not turning it over against the Seton Hall pressure. strike for Edwards. 25 point lead for the Huskies coming up on five minutes to go fourth quarter Park Lane. She's saying don't forget about me. Westbrook out on the fast break. Won't go. Aubrey Griffin can't get the rebound. Here come the Pirates. Mari Wright has to stop. Elmore works against Griffin. Alesh from the corner, no. Park Lane with the rebound, feeds Alesh, and she'll get the bucket. Really nice pass from Park Lane. And Brazella calls timeout for Seton Hall, and there's some enthusiasm for his team saying, that's what I've been looking to see. 20-point lead for UConn. Four and a half to go here at Seton Hall in the return to the Big East for the Huskies. Second game of the season started off a little slowly than uh, the second half of the first quarter. Huskies tore away to a lead. And things got a little slow in the second quarter. But uh, the third quarter, UConn came out of the locker room and roared. And that has continued here into quarter number four. Paige Beckers to Edwards. Gathered it up and put it in. And Paige Becker has been a good measure of the reason why this team roared in that third quarter. Well, Gino lamented she wasn't involved enough in that first half and made sure she's gotten involved. She's a big reason why they're playing a lot better this second half. Beckers ahead to Edwards. Drives the bucket. Good play by Alesh. Held her ground. Blocked the shot. Now she'll lose the handle on the ball at the other end. Out of bounds, turnover to UConn. Now 
Anthony Vizella knew his team was uh, was up against it tonight. Uh, needed some things to happen for his team to have a chance. They certainly have given an effort, but uh, the Huskies have just had too much. Yeah, I mean, they're a good team. He's a great coach, and they're, they've got some injuries that they're dealing with. They've lost some players, but I tell you, they compete. Beckers. Elmore and Nelson Adota having a good tussle in the paint. Elmore went to the floor, did not draw the call. And we're going to have a foul on Nelson Adota at the other end. UConn freshmen have combined for 45 points in this game. Led by Beckers. 25 of those 45. Yeah, and I would argue that her her game today is better than her her game on Saturday. You know, she didn't have a great first half, but she's gutted it out. Her first road game, she's made the difference here in the second half. And it's going to be a foul underneath on Elmore, and that is going to be it for her fifth foul. So the Hartford, Connecticut native will exit the game. Hey, the kid's tough too, right? Mm -hmm. Took a shot to the cheek and stayed in there. Fouled the kid out. Elmore with 11 points on four of 15 shooting on the night. Not what she was hoping for. No, they needed a lot Tonight. more from her. But those two fouls she got into early really yeah. hampered her game. Nice extra pass. Tristan Williams for three. Best ball movement along the perimeter all game. And Beckers will get called for the foul as she got Park Lane on the way to the rim. See that inside, right? That skip pass and then that extra pass. Nicely done. I think one of the things we're seeing here is, is four of the five starters are on the floor in this game. Uh, under three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, although now Mule will come back into the ball game, And Beckers will exit the stage with 25 points on 11 of 14 shooting. Well, think about it. It's December 15th, and it's their second game. Yeah. So he's going to need to keep the lineup that he wants you know the most together whether it's the starting five and whomever as you see beckers gets the rest for the rest of the night but he needs them together and the only way you do it is you know in game action it's all about reps nelson Dota into edwards who will get fouled as alash was a half a step late getting there that will be her fourth on Alexia Lesh. And so that will send Edwards to the line for free throws. <laughs> Kid just absorbs everything. She wants to get better. As good as she is, she just wants to keep learning and getting better. Up to 17 points for Leah Edwards, who will exit the ball game. Having had a very solid night here at Seton Hall. Eight rebounds to go with those 17 points. Jackson. Rebound underneath by Bembry, who turns around and gets that one to go. Whistle for substitutions. And our drive of the game is presented by Nissan. Could we say Paige hit high gear quickly? <laughs> explosive that was a great play at a key point in the game I just like her composure 
So Pieth Gabriel is in and they're handling the ball wearing number two for the Huskies is Autumn Chasson. Getting her first time on court as a Husky. Griffin underneath to Gabriel. Gets fouled, going to the rim. I've got the whole bench, even Gino Ariana clapping. Good, good Gino. offense by that group that's out there. There's Autumn Chasson, walk on, who had some scholarship opportunities elsewhere, but said it's been her dream to play at UConn for a long time. And as you know, as the coaching staff, you you love if a kid like this wants wants to be a part of your program. Gino loves walk-ons. You know, they don't always make it through the conditioning and everything in the beginning, but she was determined, a smart kid, valedictorian of her class. Violation as Mule was in just a bit too soon. <laughs> Gino's shaking his hand. Those are those mental mistakes yeah. that drive him crazy. Alesh has fouled out of the game after that last contact, so Kayla Harris, 33, is into the game as her substitute. Turnover. Here comes Aubrey Griffin. Aubrey's had a quiet night. Chasson looks for Aubrey. Takes it strong to the rim. Got it. Wow. I don't even know how the ball got through the traffic and went in. Shot from outside. Gets her own rebound, but it's knocked away by Westbrook. That was Amari Wright. Aubrey Griffin. What a step. Oh, missed the shot. Jackson, Treadwell, Westbrook skies for the rebound but knocks it out of bounds. Minute six to go in this one, Thursday night, just the second ever meeting between the Huskies and the Creighton Blue Jays. As Anna Makarov will check back into the game and Avina Westbrook will check out Westbrook with two points on one of eight shooting. But uh, six rebounds and seven assists. And that will be turned over to the Huskies. And for Seton Hall, they will remain at home and continue their Big East schedule. Marquette comes in on Saturday afternoon. Another tough game. Shasson took a step. Yeah, I thought she walked last possession, too. They didn't call it. Just shuffling those feet a little. <laughs> Gino told her to shoot the ball. 29-point lead for the Huskies as we go to 45 seconds to go in the ball game. That will be Jackson. No. That'll end up off of Mule and remain Pirates ball with 17 to shoot. This game just doesn't want to end. Double-double <laughs> <laughs> for Olivia tonight, 16 and 10. <laughs> Mule was able to block the inbounds pass, but right back out of bounds, and Pirates will try again. Jackson, guarded by Shasson, and that'll be a foul on the floor on the UConn freshman. Well, uh, Thursday night, the uh, Creighton Blue Jays, as I mentioned, coming to town, they picked up a big win uh, last night over Nebraska, where they dumped in 11 three-pointers in the first half of the game. Wow. UConn will have to shore things up defensively for Thursday night. And Xavier with a win yesterday also. They're coming in on Saturday. So we get right into the thick of it as uh, the Huskies return to the Big East is full on. Chasson shot front iron. And that's what Gino wanted her to do. Just catch it and shoot. There's Treadwell, 
No. Shasson with the rebound. Slows it down. Ten seconds to go here, and so the return to the Big East for the Yukon Huskies after their last game back on March 12, 2013, is a successful one. On the road, here at Walsh Gymnasium, a place with many fond memories for those at UConn. And tonight, another one made as Sacchino and Anthony Buzella share a moment at the conclusion of the game. Huskies, 92-65, the final score. 2-0 on the season and 1-0 in the Big East. And our player of the game is presented by Cadillac. Paige Becker's leading the way again for UConn. And the head coach joins us now from down courtside. Gino, that was uh, a, a, quite a second half performance. You told us going into the locker room at halftime there were three things you needed to adjust. Looked like you accomplished all three of those things in the second half. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought we did. You know, um, that first half, uh, you know, we're... Again, it's only our second game. You know, we're not really in uh, um, in game mode as much as we'd like to be at this time of the year. So um, every game that we play, we you know we're trying to play catch up. And, um, you know, defensively, we knew we were going to struggle with their backcourt, and we did. Um, you know, but I thought our defense was really, really good in the second half. And um, our offense came alive, obviously, you know. As long as Paige has the ball in her hands, we're in good shape. And, uh, you know, I think we put the ball in her hands a lot more, um, you know, in the, in the second half than we did in the first half. Um, you know, her and Nika, they pick up one foul at least during warm-up, so I'm glad they didn't foul out, <laughs> the two of them. Well, uh, you got to be happy, too, about the way Edwards played, oh, particularly yeah. in the second half. She is a beast. She was great, man. She, she gives us that big, powerful... Uh, presence in the lane, you know, that uh, that you have to have. You know, if you want to play the best teams in the country in March, which is our goal, obviously, uh, you need a big physical presence in the lane. Uh, you need somebody that's going to offensive rebound, defensive rebound, um, you know, finish. Um, you know, and, and, and she did all that. And uh, uh, I, I can't say I can't say enough about about her. And, and you know, Kristen came alive and um, you know, sometimes all it takes is, you know, a couple shots to go in and to, to feel like, um, you know, you, you, you're in the flow of things. Um, as I said, you know, every game that we play, we're going to get a little more comfortable playing. Right. And Well, you had said you'll know more about your team after this game. Yeah. What and, do you like? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, these are Big East games, you know, and people don't, you know, people don't just show up and go, you know, how many do you want to win by? You know, they make you play your butt off and. They don't, they don't stop playing. They don't care what the score is. Um, you know, so um, this, you know, every time we've come down here, I don't care whether we've won by one or won by 41. It's always a, a, a difficult place to play. And, hey, you know, as, as, as these teams start to play us more, it's going to be like this. Um, you know, a lot of these kids, you know, they've never played against us. You know, mm -hmm. they played against us a little bit last year, but it's not like, you know, we've been in the Big East the last seven years and they're used to losing to, to us. They don't they don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, same with Creighton, you know, Thursday night and same with Xavier on Saturday. They don't they could care less. They we're just another, you know, a really good team that they're going to play. So it's good for us. Um, you know, it's good for us to have to see a different style of play every night like you're going to see in our league. Um, and. You know, all these young guys, you know, they play great one minute. They play crazy the next minute. They do something great one minute. They do something crazy the next minute. Um, so you just got to live with it. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I can't live with it. I, <laughs> Easier said than done. I can't, I can't live like that. I can't live like this. <laughs> well, a big East win tonight, Gino, yeah. for you on the road, and congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jay. Talk to you soon. Gino Ariema, the head coach, picking up. Another Big East victory over Seton Hall, his 49th over the Pirates tonight. Paige Beckers led the way, 25 points. Kristen Williams, solid as well. For Megan Kumo and our entire SNY crew here at Seton Hall, Alan Bestwick sending you off uh, across the Hudson to Gary Apple and Kara Walters in the studio for the postgame show.
All right, Alan, thanks so much. Back to you and Meg. Just a little bit. UConn now 32 consecutive wins over Seton Hall in that matchup over the years. So total domination along those lines. I thought it was really interesting uh, what Gino said about Paige Beckers. He said as long as uh, Paige has the ball in her hands, I think we're in good shape. And that was on full display there, Kara, in that third quarter. Again, I'm blown away how much Gino yes. loves Paige Beckers. It's, I mean, that's high praise for her. She should be thrilled with that. She made all the difference. Six points in the first half, and it, things were a little slow for UConn. And then in the second half, Gino said at halftime, right, the ball needs to be in her hands. Well, look what happened. As soon as she got that green light to go, it's almost like she's being too nice, distributing the basketball, trying to be respectful of her elders kind of thing. But then he says, just take it away. You have the green light. Do whatever. And there was a completely different energy in the second half. And she makes everyone around her better as well. So terrific second half. She really was on full display play there especially in that third quarter and you see the variety of ways she gets it done I mean we saw fast breaks the ball doesn't touch the floor it's yeah. off the rim out and man they just run uh, the no look passes you know, yeah. but when she came to UConn you heard people talk about you know she's Magic Johnson yeah. she's got I mean I'm gonna go really old school here she's got a little bit of Pete Maravich wow it, it does she, the, back. the no look pass out she's just missing the floppy socks <laughs> you have to uh, explain right? to the children out there <laughs> who that is but you know and and this is the other thing and this is interesting right there have been a couple passes that people have fumbled. They are just not used to Paige Beckers, but I love her reaction. A lot of people could be like, oh, you blew my assist, right. you know? And Paige Beckers is going right back at you next time down the floor. She's a team player. She's like, all right, we're going to try this again. That one behind the back was awesome. I forget yes, who. Yes, Aubrey Griffin. When, yes, I don't think she I was, was like, ready oh, for it. I don't think they're ready. You better get ready because I got to tell you, it's going to be like this all season and it's so fun to watch. How rare is it to see a freshman do the sort of things that we saw her do there in that third quarter, really take over the game? Yeah, I, and from different ways, right? We talk about it. I feel like we're going to be a broken record all season long talking about Paige Beckers, but hey, you know, she deserves all the praise. Mid-range jumper, we've said it before. Terrific mid-range jumper. Her first thought is to pass. Good, sometimes bad, other times. Paige, take control of the game like she did in the second half. Love her mid-range jumper. Loves, love when she penetrates the basket. Now she attracts a lot of attention. She gets to dish it. You know, so many opportunities and so versatile. I guess the only question would be with her, we can't, we can't praise her completely, right? She's a freshman. We have to nitpick here. No, we can praise her. Maybe. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> defensively, right? I think there were times where there's some tough matchups with quicker players. Yes. And because she's not a, she's not a big strong guard like a Kristen Williams. Um, and so maybe those are the two areas that she gets a little stronger and gets faster to guard some quicker players. So defense might be the question mark. But, boy, offensively, there's no question. Yes, very fun to watch. Lauren Park Lane of Seton Hall. She was a tough guard in that yes. first half. She ended, uh, ended the night with 29 points. Let's go, uh, as uh, Alan said a, a, moment, a moment ago, back across the river. Uh, <laughs> join Alan Bestwick and, and Meg Como. And, guys, you know, we, we were talking about uh, Paige, Paige Beckers, and how spectacular she was, especially in that third quarter. What did you see different uh, from not just her but the entire squad there in that third quarter? I just thought I saw a different resolve, you know, that they they adjusted, you know, at halftime. Obviously, Gino and the staff said whatever they said to them to, OK, well, I, this kid went off. We can't let her continue to do so. But I think more than what they weren't doing defensively, UConn was a little bit disjointed offensively. And, and I think they just came out and they got back to business. And, and I was impressed the way they they came out in that second 20 and 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 just calmed down executed and ended up scoring 92 points i didn't see that coming yeah yeah and give some credit to the pirates too right and I, we used the phrase gritty a couple of times because meg used it in the open i just brought it back a few more times but uh, they played gritty defense and i think that it took page a little time to adjust to that mm -hmm. and i think probably one of those things that was said to her at halftime was take the shot Go, go to the bucket yeah. and uh, and that opens up a lot of things for other people obviously the more she does that guys i wanted to ask you a little bit about defense okay obviously better in the second half park lane went off for 29 points in the game better in the second half this is an example of this team doesn't have that one lockdown player right like a key nurse guard that person do you think that on this team someone's just going to step up eventually is that one player or is it always going to have to kind of be by committee well, and that's a good question, Kara. And I think as this season 
uh, you know, kind of plods along. Although we don't have a game after Tuesday, so who knows? <laughs> um, but I, you know what? I, I, let's think about Aubrey Griffin. You know, she's played um, some key defensive minutes throughout the course of last season. Been a little quiet thus far, but you know, Mir McLean, I think, is going to step in that role as well, and um, and we'll see. But I, I think it might be a little bit by committee. But that's Gino's big question right now is, or his statement anyway, they can't guard anybody. And, and of the starters tonight, I thought Avina Westbrook was the best defender for sure. But a lot of what you saw, you know, think about that third quarter. Uh, Park Lane didn't get many points in the third quarter when that starting five was on the floor and Westbrook was keying defending her. So getting other players to step up to that experience level of defense, I think, is going to be one of those work-in-progress things as we go. Yeah, I, I would agree. By the way, guys, as we say goodbye to you for tonight, uh, you do look like NFL announcers standing <laughs> up there in, in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we'll see you back on Thursday, guys. Alan and Meg from uh, South Orange, New Jersey, where UConn gets the win over Seton Hall, 92-65. Uh, 48 points for the freshmen tonight. Now, I know a lot of those were Paige Beckers, but Aaliyah Edwards had 17 efficient points, 7 of 10 shooting, 8 rebounds. Gino spoke a moment ago about the fact that she is just plain tough, and I know you love what you're seeing from her so far. I love her, and he's right. You need that dominant, big presence in the post. If you're going to win a championship, you need somebody like her. I love it. She handles the physicality of the game. She she calls for the ball. She runs the floor for a big. She set screens. We saw her taking some shots from the outside. I mean, she really is very versatile. And maybe she likes kind of being under the radar a little bit because it's all about the page show as a freshman. And I kind of like the way she's coming in there, just gritty, doing her job, you know, bringing her hard hat and her lunch yes. and just getting it done. And I like how physical she is. She draws a lot of attention. She makes herself big, takes up a lot of space. You're going to see great things from her in the future down the line. Uh, mark my words, she's going to be a huge difference maker. And, in this and I've said it before, I say it again. When you start talking about big, physical get excited. bigs, you get very <laughs> excited over there, Ms. Walters. There's no question about that. We've got more to come here as we just get going on our post-game broadcast. When we come back and we'll have complete game highlights, we'll hear Gino's post-game address to the media. Plus, we'll hear from Kristen Williams, who had a, I don't know, quiet 21, a little bit under the radar. Strong bounce back game for her. We're back in a moment. Gary Apple back alongside Carol Walters inside Studio 31. There's Gino Oriema, head coach of the third-ranked UConn Huskies, Paige Beckers. Getting it going early for Connecticut. Under a minute later, it's on a Makarot to Kristen Williams. And UConn, they got up and down the floor pretty, pretty efficiently tonight. Textbook, ball barely touches the floor, right? Williams right here blowing by her defender, getting the bucket and the foul. She had 11 in that first quarter. UConn up by 10 after one. UConn, though, no answers for Lauren Park Lane. Not a big player, about five feet, five inches tall, but really tough. Give her a lot of credit. She was a big part of Seton Hall tonight. She had 29 points in the game. Anna Makarot called for traveling right there. UConn 12 turnovers in that first <laughs> half. Gino finds his team only up by eight at the break, but in the third quarter, Beckers, she really did take over the game. She did. Gino gave her the green light and said, we need you involved, and early and often they went to her. Pick and roll, Olivia Nelson, Adota. Getting to the basket off the pass right there from Beckers. And then later in that third quarter, it's Westbrook to Makarot to Beckers. And, man, they're just in tune out there. I mean, passing the basketball, honestly, it never touches the floor. UConn up by 21 under a minute to go in that third quarter. Williams, the open player this time, they reverse the basketball beautifully. And Paige Beckers, she sees the floor so well. She goes to the right, kicks it back to the left. Time winding down in the third. Beckers going to take it all the way to the bucket. And the foul, man. And she is just a pleasure. Look at the handle right Look there. Look at that. The in, out. The t I thought she was going to pull up and take the shot. Nope. She goes right in, gets the and one. UConn had 33 points there in that third quarter. Then in the fourth, off the miss right here, Aaliyah Edwards. And we spoke about her a moment ago. She chipped in with 17 off the bench. Impressive. UConn gets the win, 92-65. 26 assists on 39 made baskets for UConn. And defensively, they held Seton Hall to 5 of 28 shooting from beyond the arc. 18%. So that's getting it done on the defensive side as well. Kristen Williams, short time ago with Allen and Mick. Kristen Williams joins us from courtside now. Kristen, 21 tonight for you and a win for your team. What do you think about uh, your team's performance and yours? 
Yes, I thought we did a great job. We came out with a lot of energy. Um, everything started on the defensive end, and it just carried over offensively. Um, I thought we did a, a great job bringing energy today. Your first road game, uh, I know it's, you know, we're kind of living in the twilight zone here, Kristen, but <laughs> was it, did it feel like a normal road game? Um, no, it was odd, actually. Just playing in an empty gym is just weird for us. You know, UConn um, fans travel everywhere we go, so it's just different. Like I said, we have to bring energy from the bench to the floor, so it, it is different, but I thought we did a great job handling it. Getting used to new teammates, getting used to what, where the ball's going to come from, that kind of thing. Do you feel like your team took a big step forward in these, the, with these two games under your belt? I think we did, you know. It's been a long time since we've played, and we do have a lot of new guys. Um, but I thought we were handling it well. Of course, we have a lot of work to do, but we're going to take it game by game. You mentioned the new guys, Kristen. What do the freshmen, and certainly Avina, but what do they bring to your team? They bring a lot of things. You know, you have people coming off the bench that can withstand whatever we have going on. They can bring points to the score. Um, it's just a lot of things that we were missing last year that we have this year. And um, we're only going to get better because they are younger guys and they're not really used to this. So we're just going to take it again day by day and just get better moving forward. Kristen, thanks. See you Thursday night. Thanks so right. much. Thank you. All right, so Kristen Williams uh, delivering 21 points for the UConn Huskies in their 92-65 win over Seton Hall. I think one of the things uh, was interesting from that conversation with Allen and Meg was going on the road. Nobody in yeah. the building. That's a small gym, right? Yes, Walsh, yes. Walsh gym. It's like That's, a high school gym. Right. So, so uh, for beginners, it's a small place and nobody in the building and having to create your own energy. What's the challenge there? Well, it's a challenge. If you're coaching a team, Chris Daly, that's a challenge every day, getting them to talk, getting them to cheer on the bench, being loud, that sort of thing. That's a process that you kind of teach them when they get there. But now you have to just bring that up, you know, 10 decibels. You have to just start really yelling and really, because like Kristen said, you have to create your own energy. So sometimes that's hard, you know, especially on the bench if you're not playing and you really need to pick the team up. It's not an easy thing to do. So this is a very different world. This is a very different season. You know, that part of it has to be play into things. So you have no choice. You better get it together. Being on the bench and being part of a team is a big, just as important as being on the court. Let's get a look right now. Tonight's stat leaders, they are presented by Toyota. And it was Paige Beckers leading the way. 25 points, 19 of those coming in the second half on very efficient. 11 of 14 shooting. Olivia Nelson Adota had... 10 rebounds, a, a double-double for Olivia Nelson Adota and Anna Makarat. Sort of a quiet seven assists, yeah. just involved, involved in the offense, getting it done again under the radar, but doing what she did tonight to help UConn go to 2-0 on the season. More to come here on our post-game show. When we come back, we're going to hear from the Hall of Fame head coach, Gino Oriema, on what he liked from his team as we watch Paige Becker's shoot the ball, set up her teammates. She is really inbound feeling. the ball inbound and the make ball. it. <laughs> yeah, she's not bad is what you're saying. Yeah. Coach, Seton Hall had a, a lot of fight in them. How do you think your team handled it as the game went on? Um, well, like I said to the team, you know, it's um, – it's a Big East game, and it's our first one, and it's our first road game. So I didn't expect it to be um, um, easy by any stretch of imagination. I thought it would be difficult, and certainly that whole first half was difficult in um, in terms of, you know, how hard it is to defend, you know, their guards. Um, that It was... Uh, it was exactly what I thought it would be. And, um, and we, we started to make some, some, some adjustments and we started to get into the flow of the game. And, and by the second half, um, you know, we had settled into a nice rhythm, uh, both defensively, you know, and offensively. And, um, you know, we got some great performances out of a couple guys and uh, that's generally what it takes on the road. What did you uh, say to Paige at half? Because it seemed like the third quarter, she just came out firing. Um, I mean, I, I, I just think we, we changed up some of the stuff that we were doing to get the ball in her hands a little bit more. Uh, but 
mainly, you know, when we started getting stops on defense, then she was able to get the ball out and transition. And then that's when it's, you know, really difficult for the other team to, to defend her. Um, you know, but we, we weren't getting enough stops in the first half in order to be able to do that. Gino, do you like the aggressiveness of, uh, of what Liv and uh, Kristen gave you tonight? Yeah, I thought both of them were, were, were much better. Um, Kristen, especially, I thought, uh, I thought she worked really, really hard on defense and, and that's a start, you know, that's where it's got to begin. And, uh, you know, I, I think the, um, the, your defensive uh, intensity level carries over into how good your offense is. And um, I thought, you know, we gave her a tough assignment today and uh, she did a great job, you know, uh, guarding a couple of their three point shooters and, um, and you know, and then trans translated to, to good offense as well. So, and um, you know, and, and live, you know, live is, you know, she's different than Aaliyah. I mean, Aaliyah is going to go in there and it's going to be, it's going to be bodies flying, you know, and all that. And Liv has got to do it a little bit different way. And, you know, and, and I, and I thought that running the floor and, and getting some touches in transition was what we needed from her today. John, you want to go ahead? Sure. Thank you. Hey, Gino. Hey. Hey. Um, have you started to think already about like how you're going to describe the way Paige plays for the next four years? I mean, we're two games in. She's when 19 to 25. She just she's she's obviously different. Um, just just talk about what she did today in an effort where she this 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 kid is she looks like Diana to me in, in a lot of ways. Um, she she just has a, a little bit of a knack for the game, you know. Um, she doesn't get herself uh in difficult situations um very often she um she plays at a really good tempo she doesn't allow herself to be rushed um she knows what she's doing with the ball she knows where she wants to go with the ball and um you know if you're if you're on her team all you have to do is run around on offense with your hands up all the time and you'll probably score double figures, you know, and um, it's it's rare that you have a kid that can see that much of the floor, you know, but, you know, we're only two games in, uh, you know, a couple of the fouls that she had that put her on the bench, you know, that's unacceptable for somebody that good. You know, you're not going to beat anybody being on the bench. Um, so she's got a lot to learn. Don't get me wrong, but. There's something special about her. There's something unique about her. And anybody that watches her play, it doesn't take long to figure that out. No, it doesn't. And the fact that Gino said she, you know, she doesn't get rushed. And for right. a freshman to have that sort of yeah. poise, I know just two games in, but she looks like she's been playing college basketball for years. She does. And like we said, like against a zone and everything, she finds seams. Yes. She does a good job keeping her composure and finding the right spots. You can tell she really understands yes. the game of basketball. We're coming back in a moment. We'll look ahead to UConn's next game coming up Thursday night against Creighton. Another game to be seen right here on SNY. UConn wins big and we're back in a moment. Here we go. It is the drive of the game presented by Subaru. And there goes Paige Beckers through the entire Seton Hall defense. As soon as she did that move, we're like, wrap it up. It's uh, the drive of the night right there. <laughs> Again, it is presented by Subaru. She led UConn. She had 25 points on the night as UConn goes to 2-0 on the season. Karen and I back on Thursday night. UConn looking to make it a 3-0 start. Our pregame coverage before the game against Creighton begins at 6 o'clock. Coming up following a break, the series premiere of UConn Undefeated. For Kara, I'm Gary. Thanks for watching. So long from New York City.